Welcome to Behold, a podcast for women longing to live a life worthy of the call they have received. I'm Christy Horsch, and this is episode 53. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 53 of the podcast. I am so grateful that you are here today. We are now in the month of May, which tends to be a busy time of year because we are gearing up for summer, which is very exciting, but can also feel a little daunting to us. So today I am going to talk about seasons, the different seasons of our lives, how we identify them and how we can work with them to live a more intentional life and more of the life that we have been wanting to live. And then at the end, we're going to specifically get into summer for our examples. Okay, so let's get started with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, come and fill the seasons of our lives. Lord, show us where you want us to be, where you want us to go, and how you have designed us perfectly for this season. Even if it's difficult, even if it's busy, you know exactly where we would be and you're calling us to bring you glory in this season. Help us to live these seasons well. Help us to follow you always so that we may bring you glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So we all know the different seasons. We have four seasons and we look forward to that change. We look forward to the change in the rhythm of our days, of our weather, of our clothing. We just look, we just really enjoy that change of seasons. We're also very blessed in the church to have the liturgical seasons. These seasons give us this rhythm of feasting and fasting, of contrition and celebration. And so we cling to that because we know that the church has created these seasons for us. We also have cultural seasons. For example, the start of the school year. We kind of have that first little season in the fall when the school year starts. We have a um, the end of the school year season. We have a summer break season. Just these seasons that our culture gives us. Finally, your family also has seasons. You have Maybe a season of a new baby, or a season of little kids, or teenagers, or becoming empty nesters. When we identify what seasons that we are personally in, we can become more intentional about that season. I first heard about this work of, of identifying our seasons and working with our seasons from Sarah McKenzie of Read Loud Revival, so feel free to check her out. So to start this process of really getting to know what's going on in our life, we first need to give the season a name, identify it, okay? We give it a name and then we also give it a boundary. It doesn't have to be a fancy or creative name. We just call it what it is. So maybe you're in newborn season or maybe you're in end of the school year season. We also give that season a boundary. Now this doesn't always work perfectly, just like winter often spills outside of that December 21st through March 21st, our season may also spill out a little here and there, and that's okay. Our brain just likes having that starting and stopping point. It helps for us to feel like it won't be going on forever, especially if you're in a really long season. For example, maybe you're in a weight loss season and you have over 100 pounds to lose. You know that that's going to take time. So maybe you'll want to break this up into shorter seasons to help your brain to focus where it needs to focus each season. Next, once we've identified the season we're in, we've given it those boundaries, then we want to choose a priority or a goal for that season. One thing that is the most important for us to accomplish during this period of time. For example, maybe you're going to be sending a kid off to college in the fall. You may want making memories with him to be your summer priority this year. By identifying that, by knowing what is important to you, when things come up during the summer, during this season, you can recognize if it aligns with your priorities and choose how to proceed in the season. This may sound like common sense, but so many of us don't do this. We say, oh, I really want to make memories this summer. But then the urgency of life comes up. 
Somebody needs this. Somebody needs that. And suddenly it's the end of the summer and we're trying to cram everything in because we've lost sight of what was important during the summer and only focused on what was urgent. By identifying up front, this is my priority. This is what's important. This is what's going to happen first. We're able to keep our focus through the entire season. The interesting thing about seasons, though, is the way that our brain remembers them. Typically, our brain remembers the beginning, it remembers the end, and it remembers a few highlights in between. So it's wise to plan an event for the beginning of the season and the end of the season, and then sprinkle some fun memories in between. The events that I'm talking about, the beginning or the end, they don't have to be big and flashy. They can be, but they don't have to be. Our brain really likes using our senses. So if you can incorporate senses into that event, it tends to stick better in the memory. A side note, just a little side note throwing, throwing in here. This is part of why the mass is so powerful because it has opening prayer, a concluding prayer, and then it sprinkles use of your senses throughout the entire entire mass. And that's why the mass is so memorable and powerful to your brain. Anyway, so back to our seasons example. On the first day of school, <coughs> excuse me, on the first day of school, maybe you decide that you're going to make a really big breakfast or you have donuts or you sing a special song that you only sing on the first day of school. In our house, for example, we always make chocolate chip cookies on the first day of school. They, you're using the sense of taste because they enjoy the cookies. You're using that sense of smell because it's warm. I, and, and even, or because it's warm, because it smells like cookies and the cookies are warm. So they're using that touch, that feeling of warmth. It's a little thing. It's a very little thing, but it engages the senses. It's become a tradition. It's something they remember and look forward to. They don't remember every day of school, but chocolate chip cookies on the first day of school stands out in their brains. We can do the same thing for the last day of season. Maybe we mark it in some way besides we can, we can mark it in a way of engaging senses, but besides engaging the senses, the brain also really seeks community. So involving other people is another way to help cement the memory. Maybe on the last day of school, you go with friends to the park or you have a little party. It's a way of engaging the brain and creating a memory to bookend the season. Okay. As I mentioned before, we remember the beginning and the end and a few highlights in the middle. Okay. So let's kind of use this towards our summer for this year. We want our kids to have a fabulous summer. We want them to read books, to grow closer as a family, to explore, to play and explore and enjoy. We are told by our culture to give our children a magical summer. We're thrown summer bucket lists and trips to the beach and vacations. And there's nothing wrong with all of that. But summer is three months long. And that can be a lot of pressure on a mom to craft a magical summer experience for every single day. So let's take the pressure off by using the tools that we just discussed so our kids will have an amazing summer with less stress on our part. First, let's identify the season. Do you want the entire break from school or do you want to break that into pieces? Okay, do we wanna say, okay, this is our summer season. It's going to go from the middle of May to the middle of August. Or do you want to say, we're going to have the start of summer and that's gonna be from mid-May until the 4th of July. And then we're going to have the second half of summer, which is going to be 4th of July till school starts. And then we've got, we're broken into the two pieces of summer, the two summer seasons. You're going to do what works best for your family. Then once you've identified your season, you've given it those boundaries. You're going to identify what your priority is for this season. If your number one priority is to make memories with your soon to be college kid, you're going to think of a couple memorable activities to sprinkle over the season. Things that your family loves to do, things that the two of you can do just to, the two of you together, but you're only going to think of a few because that's how our memory works. You're going to remember the highlights from the summer, not the everyday. So instead of trying to put effort into lots of little things, Choose a few important things and put effort into those. Make those your priority. 
include something special for the first day of the season and the last day of the season. Sprinkle those memories in between. And the season is going to be filled then, feel like it's filled with phenomenal memories because you're going to have this season of peace where you've kept your priority and you've kept your sanity. If your priority is that, let's say you decide that you're going to break your season of summer into months and you decide for the month of July for that season, your priority is going to be that you want your kids to read every day for that month. We know that it's important for kids to continue reading over the summer and you're like, this is the summer we're going to do it. Month of July is going to be a daily reading month. Okay. So you've recognized that's your priority. So you want to start by planning an event to start and to stop this season. So maybe on the first day of July, you plan a trip to the library and then maybe you do some kind of a treat to go with it and you tell the kids, this is what we're doing this month. This is how we're starting. Look at this fun library trip. Maybe we're stopping to get ice cream or something else that's fun and out of the ordinary for us. This is how we've started this season. Okay. Then you schedule or you plan, prioritize daily reading time. Maybe that means you reading out loud for 15 minutes. Maybe that means the kids reading to themselves quietly for 15 minutes, whatever that means you're, prioritizing that in your day, that time is going to happen. And then you're going to sprinkle those fun memories in there. Like, okay, once a week on Wednesdays, when we eat dinner, we discuss as a family what we've been reading over the last week. What have you been reading? What have you been reading? Oh, we read this picture book and this is what was happening. What do you think about that? And just kind of talk about the books. It'll give our kids this, what I'm reading is important. It matters to my parents. And then they'll have the, that, community connection that will help that stand out for them in their memories. And then you'll end that season end that July with some other activity. Okay. We're going to celebrate that we have made it the whole month by going to the park or by going to the pool or by having a tea party with friends, whatever it might be. Just, it's just a way to help make reading month attainable, memorable, and joyful. Okay. Maybe like me, you're going to be having a baby this summer or your summer, you know, already you are in a season that you're not going to have a big and flashy summer. And that's okay. Recognizing the limitations of your season will help you to plan realistically and to communicate those expectations with your family. No, we're not going on a big vacation this summer, but we're still going to go camping in the backyard or no, we won't be at the pool every day this year but we will make a couple trips there by managing your expectations and their expectations and accepting that you're exactly where God wants you to be in this season. You will open up your brain to find out what you can do in this season rather than just what you can't do. If you sit down to start thinking about your season and all you can think of are the things that you can't do, pull out a piece of paper and make yourself a list. These are the things that I can do. Because oftentimes our brain likes to show us what we can't do. That's what keeps us stuck. We see that list in our heads. Oh, look at all these things we can't do with a newborn or look at all these things we can't do while Sally has a broken leg. But instead we write down all the things that we can do. These are all the things that we can do. We have our brain start looking at solving the problem rather than spinning in the, oh, I'm so disappointed that I can't do these things. Look at all that we can do. Look how blessed we are. Look at what we're going to accomplish this summer. Okay. And so then you'll have this list. These are all the things I can do. And so then you'll be able to prioritize which of these things are important. Which one am I going to sprinkle? Am I going to do this once a week? I'm going to do this once a month. We're just going to be really realistic with ourselves. Maybe this summer, (laughs) maybe this summer you want to prioritize not losing your mind while the kids are home. I hear from so many moms that say that they just really go crazy over the summer. And first of all, if this is you, that's okay. You're going to just, you're going to work on managing your mind. You're going to step back and you're going to break your summer into chunks instead of trying to take it all at that three months. You're going to take it in maybe a month at a time, maybe two weeks at a time, 
maybe breaking it in half, but you're going to take those chunks, you're going to identify them and give them the boundaries. Then you're going to recognize that your priority for these chunks of time is probably going to be maybe, maybe you have softball season first. And so your priority during softball is that you want the kids to be at all of their practices and their games and well fed. So then you're going to plan that out. That's going to be your priority. So you're going to plan the way that you're going to do that. And then maybe in the next season, once softball ends, your priority is when the kids are home a little more often, you just want to be a peaceful mom. You want to feel a lot of peace. So then you're going to make that priority and you're going to maybe recognize that you'll need a weekend away at some point in the summer, or that maybe you need a, your, a night out for yourself away from the kids each week, whether that's a date night or a night with friends or just a night alone to recharge. And you're going to make that happen for yourself. Or maybe it means that you get the teenager down the street to come over one afternoon a week and play with the kids in the backyard while you are cleaning the house. That might be what you need most to help keep your peace. And it's okay to be honest with yourself about that, that keeping your peace is the priority of summer. Now, even if that is your priority and you're like, well, I feel bad making myself the priority. When you're a peaceful mom, everyone in the house does better. And it doesn't mean that you have to give up making the fun memories. You can still have a start of the season celebration and end of the season celebration, sprinkle those memories in between, but those are not going to feel so overwhelming and so daunting if you're coming from that place of peace, okay? You can have both. You can have that some fun summer for your kids and the peaceful summer for you. So identifying, prioritizing, and working with your season, along with doing your mindset work, can make this happen. Yes, there will still be hard days. And yes, you will probably lose your cool sometimes. But this doesn't mean that it's an awful summer. By having a priority, having a strong opening and closing, spattering in a few of those memories in between, you can have a summer that your entire family remembers very fondly. Of course, this concept of seasons is powerful and can help you to work smarter towards your goals rather than harder. But it is for nothing if we don't invite the Lord in. Make sure as you're planning your season to consult with the Lord and what his plans are for you, where he wants you to focus. And then if the season ends up turning out nothing like you had planned, you can still rest in the knowledge that you're living his will with a grateful heart. When we make our season, when we make our season intentional, it is so much easier to hear God's voice in our day-to-day -day lives. And when we can do that, we are one step closer to living our lives worthy of the call we have received. I'm Christy Horsch. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this episode has resonated with you, please share it on your social media, share it with your friends and family. This is so helpful to me in continuing this work. Also, check out Behold on Facebook and Instagram. I also have a lot of free content through you can sign up for it on our website, and there are the links to all of those are in the show notes. I hope that you have a very blessed season in front of you.